Okay, so we're gonna try this. Do you guys hear this? Okay, good. So, we're <laughs> we have a couple different videos to show you, so I'm gonna try and set up the lapel so it'll catch up the projector. So if we start playing the videos and you guys can't hear it, then I need you to tell me, because I don't know unless you tell me, <laughs> okay? Um, so what you guys just watched as you were coming in and getting settled, um, that was our uh, call for worship every day at the mass events while we were at the gathering. Um, and in the video, this is the official video released by the uh, gathering organizers. And as you can see, it showed the stadium and uh, the performers and kind of where we were in the setup. Um, so I wanted to make sure that you guys got a chance to see and experience a little bit of what we did. Um, so I'm going to ask our youth, Drew, Christian, and Jaden, come sit up in the front with um, Ashley and Neil. Where are you? Yeah, there you go. Yep. See, just like the first like two rows here would be great, or first three. How's that? All right. Um, so. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. First off, um, you'll see down uh, the center aisle, this is a bunch of the stuff that we brought back. And so um, I've told the kids that they need to bring stuff in um, and uh, I'll give them the mic at the end so they can tell you a little bit about what they brought and um, what their big takeaway was um, from the gathering. But um, since I have the microphone first, I'm going to tell you what I brought just so that you know. Um, I uh, brought some souvenirs from uh, other districts, but the thing that I really want to um, call your attention to if you want, the kids wrote postcards themselves that are going to be mailed out a week after the gathering. So if you want to read what they want to remember a week after the gathering, they're right here. Um, so anyway, that's the fun thing that I brought. Otherwise, they just brought duplicates of what I brought. <laughs> All right, so let's um, go ahead and get started. Um, so we have our show and tell. And I want to say thank you for coming and thank you for your support in this. Um, so our first day, July the 8th, started at 3 in the morning at church. <laughs> Um, it was wonderful because um, the Eat, uh, Melissa Eaton and Sarah Mache fed us a hearty breakfast and sent us on our way. Um, and we flew, um, and for the first time, three of our youth got on an airplane, and they did great. They were a little nervous, <laughs> but they did perfect. The flight went flawlessly, so they got a perfect flight adventure. Um, then after that, um, this whole pew here went, by the way, the kids haven't seen this. <laughs> they don't actually know what I'm going to show, which is going to make this 10 times more fun. <laughs> so Neil and Ashley took the kids over to a water park, and I um, had the duty of registering us all for the gathering. Um, and so they spent the day at the water park, um, which was great because it was very hot that day. I would say the eye for the day was just seeing the kids uh, enjoy the water park and working with Ashley to uh, help organize. So every day we ask the same four questions. What was your high for the day? What was your low for the day? What did you learn today? And where did you see Jesus? So we interviewed them every day, got these questions. So this was Neil's answer. What was your low for the day? I guess walking around with no shoes on. <laughs> Why? Because it burned your feet a lot. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So if you couldn't hear Christian very well, his low for the day was um, the hot pavement, because he found out that Texas pavement burns your feet if you're not wearing shoes at the water park. <laughs> this was a lesson learned by a couple of our students. <laughs> Both learned to curse our legs when we go down the water slide. Hard lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Not a fun one. <laughs> no. 
so it looks very bashful, but I'm going to ask if Jane or Ashley want to elaborate on this. Okay. Yes, I can elaborate. All right, so the first uh, ride of the day, we decided to go down this slide that was pretty much vertical. Um, and they were all too scared to go, so I decided to go first. Um, and they tell you to cross your legs for good reason. Um, but the second that you start going down the slide, it's you end up not crossing your legs. And so there's water that gets everywhere, and I mean everywhere. <laughs> so it happened to both Jaden and I, and we got out of the slide, and I don't think I've ever run to the bathroom so fast in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just go down those slides, you turn to a cat just going all the way down. <laughs> Did you see Jesus today? With all the other people on the plane, because there was a lot, a lot of National Youth Gathering people on the plane. So, uh, Jaden said there was a lot of National Youth Gathering people on our plane. It happened both times. I would say at least half to two thirds of the plane were all gathering people. Um, and that was really, really cool. Um, and uh, on our way home, uh, I, I had suggested to a few people that we just break out, break out in hymnody and just confuse everyone out on the plane, but we decided not to do that. It, was, it would be testing some people's patience, but you'll find out about why later. All right, day two, we found Isaac, and everyone was very, very excited that we found Isaac on the very first official day of the gathering. Um, Isaac was uh, over in uh, the... Uh, Oh shoot, uh, the servant event area. Um, so he manned uh, the uh, blood drive booth uh, for the gathering. So I actually gave blood, I gave plasma for, I gave plasma for the first time. I haven't given blood for the first time, but first, my first time giving plasma. And poor Isaac just sat with me <laughs> while I was sitting there um, and uh, chatted me up, so that was nice for a half an hour. <laughs> So I don't know if you could see all the bobbing heads in unison, but that's a lot of people, okay? And that was only a part of it. So what happens at the um, uh, National Youth Gathering is that each of the districts um, takes a day and a time and uh, basically gathers up their entire district. Now a district is, um, like for the Missouri district, it's just the state of Missouri. So all the kids that came down from Missouri all gather in one spot for a certain time and get to mix and mingle together. Um, so this is a whole bunch of kids and adults doing line dancing. Um, and our district had uh, rented out uh, <laughs> a nightclub. Um, but we did it during the day, okay? <laughs> it was off hours. Um, but it was a huge place, so it was able to accommodate us. They had a uh, longhorn uh, steer. They had armadillo races. They had this line dancing floor. Um, so it was great. And there was multiple, multiple districts who all used the same event just at different days and different times. So that was our fun times there. All right. Now, I do still have the scar from this. <laughs> Um, but uh, basically, we were racing um, tricycles around, and I should have asked them to scoot the seat up more so I didn't have to reach so much, but the tire kept biting my legs, so I got my skin taken off. It was great to have the first day of the gathering. That was wonderful. I tried to look sad. <laughs> she says I look stoic. <laughs> um, so... Uh, first night of the gathering, uh, we had dugout seats. They had us in the Astro Stadium uh, for the mass events in the evenings, and so we got dugout seats. Um, and this is just a note that may not mean anything to you, but it meant something to the people who went. So for the first time ever in gathering history, they assigned seats for everyone at the mass gathering. 
So previously what would happen is that churches would have to line up, I mean like an hour or more ahead of time, so that they could attempt to get either seats together or get good seats, that sort of thing. Well, this year they assigned all the seats, so that meant that there was no rush to get in, there were no lines, there were no pushing or shoving or anything like that, like people just knew where they were going, which was amazing. Um, the flip side on it for the gathering organizers was that they had to every single night assign 20,000 people to seats. So it was a huge undertaking from them, but very, very much appreciated. It was time well spent. Oh, I think my high was being at the mass event. Um, not gonna lie, I did get a little emotional at the very beginning because it was pretty weird to see that many people worshiping at the same time. So it was our first night of the mass event, which um, for everyone but Drew and Ashley and myself, I think that was their first time ever experiencing the mass gathering. Can you guys hear this okay? Okay. Wonderful. My love for the day was waiting like 30 minutes to an hour for the buses to take us back to the hotel. You know, how, how much planning it takes for a gathering this size with, with 20,000 people, and it really takes everybody working together to pull it off, and there are going to be small problems, but you can get through it. You just have to work together. Did I see Jesus? Uh, definitely um, just all the people, right? Um, mass event especially. It just, it's one of those where you just get a, a very a small glimpse, a very small glimpse of what heaven is going to be like with all the people all singing God's praises all at the same time. And, oh, it's just amazing. Just amazing. Um, and can't wait for um, more mass events and worship by the end of the week. So just a note, what you'll notice about mine is that mine is all, I'm recording myself where I was recording everybody else and typically mine were done at the very end of the night, like one o'clock in the morning. So just know, I can't speak coherently, I'm just tired, okay? All right, so on to day three. So this was walking to the convention center um, and I mean, you can kind of see it in the picture. It goes, I mean, the line's just all the way back and we're filling the entire sidewalk. So it's pretty cool. Um, so then we got to go around and visit the different uh, Concordia booths that were around. And if you don't know, they uh, rent out a convention center. So what this means is that this building is, uh, let's see, Carrie, you can probably correct me if I'm wrong. It's like a mile long. Yeah, so it's three city blocks long. Yeah, so it's three city blocks long, about a city block wide, and it's three levels. Okay, and we rented out that entire building and had the entire building in use. So the entire downstairs of it was food and uh, booths, like display booths, like Concordia, CPH. They had all kind of RSOs from the LCMS. So three city blocks worth of booths and games and food, okay? That was just on the first level. Second level was um, a lot of uh, adult uh, sessions that they could go to uh, for the adults only. The third floor was all youth sessions only. Um, so, I mean, using the whole, the whole space. Um, and then we had our mass event, um, and uh, this day we uh, got to hear about how Jesus is the final word. So the idea being that there are lots of middle words, um, middle words like anxiety or um, depression or a bad day or even death, right? But God is the final word. Jesus is the, the, the final word with that. My high for the day was getting to see Isaac from back home, from our home at church. So seeing Isaac, 
That was cute. I like that. What was your low for the day? Standing on this line. You mean like this line that goes all the way over here? Okay, so James Lowe was standing in that line, okay? Personally, I love the eye roll. The eye roll just makes the video. <laughs> Um, but just a note, okay, so they had to shuttle almost half of the gathering, about 10,000 people, out to hotels every single night, all right? And overall, the gathering did an amazing job because the longest we ever waited was the first day. That video that I showed you was not the first day, right? That was day two, day two officially of the gathering. So the very first day, we waited in line for about an hour for our shuttle. That was it. With, I mean, they're having to shuttle 10,000 people. That night, I think we might have waited 40, 30, 30 to 40 minutes. So I mean, yeah, the line was long, but we moved fast. What did you learn today? I learned to not throw this in the spaces. He learned not to throw that in people's faces. <laughs> That's what he learned today, because there were several people that he hit in the face with them, because it's one of those spinner things where you just, whatever, swing your palms together and they go flying. Yep. Where did you see Jesus today? Everybody screaming at their top, everybody screaming at the top of their lungs, singing in the stadium. Yep. So definitely the mass event again. All right, so on to day four. This is technically day three, the official start of the gathering, okay? So we did a servant event um, and we're uh, building beds for uh, sleep and heavenly peace. Has anybody ever heard of them before? Okay, um, I actually had the pleasure of knowing this organization before we went to the gathering, so I went, when I found out we were assigned to them, I got really, really excited. Um, so basically, it's a nationwide organization uh, that works to provide beds for children who don't have the opportunity to sleep in one. So our youth got to build, assemble, and deliver two beds to a single mom's household. She had two children. Um, and their father had died um, about a year previous. Um, so she's a recent widow um, with uh, now two kids. Um, and so it was wonderful to uh, be able to uh, serve that family. And um, the really fun thing was is that then we got lunch and we got to sit outside in the Texas heat while we ate it. Um, <laughs> but, um, Something that I want to draw your attention to with this is um, if you hadn't known already about our youth, um, they uh, had a automatic comfort zone with each other. So Christian, who's on the far left, and then Jaden, who's in the middle, they automatically were a pair. And then Drew um, and Ethan, um, who are the other two in the picture, they were like an automatic pair that just went together, like that's just how the group automatically broke out. So what do you guys notice about this picture? Yes, they're apart. And for me, as somebody who has to uh, pay attention constantly to uh, people's interactions with each other and monitor and keep a pulse on how the group is doing, this picture speaks volumes because they intentionally or unintentionally sat apart from their person for an entire hour and had lunch with a different partner. So that was a great building experience for our group that we brought. I bet you didn't think I'd notice that, did you? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. What did you just say? And Jaden said we didn't even notice it. And I love that, I love that. You just like made my day. 
All right, so these were our next uh, seats for the mass event. In my opinion, arguably the best for the entire week. You see how close we are to that field? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, we were five rows from the field. So no, these are not cheap seats, no. And, uh, and then after the mass event, we had done a, uh, a mass plus event where they brought out uh, the band for King and Country. Has anybody ever heard of them? Okay, so they are uh, currently arguably the top Christian band in the nation. Um, and so we were five rows from where King and Country were performing and I texted my mother and I was so excited. I'm like, you will not believe this because I will never pay for these seats ever in my life, but I'm right here. So that was exciting. Hi, for the day I was getting to do a event for a uh, lady from Honduras with two little boys who lost her husband and getting to pray with her over over her uh, little one and uh, just share. It was it was really awesome. Yeah. So um, while we were there at the servant event, um, we got to uh, talk with the lady and we used Google Translate quite a bit. Um, but uh, we got to pray over her and her um, kids, which was wonderful. Yes. Yes. Being stuck on a really long bus ride with a part of the bus that had no air conditioning. I love that. It was really bad. Um, it was we when we were driving back. A part of our the the back half of our bus lost AC. Um, so that was that was an exciting trip. What? Yeah, this is just to and from. Um, so today during mass event, they were talking about um, statistics and uh, they were. Uh, having basically the uh, gathering stand up when they called different numbers and they represented uh, different statistics like um, chronic pain in youth and children uh, or uh, depression or anxiety numbers, like all kinds of statistics like that. And so if they called your number, then you stood up um, and it was basically an accurate representation of um, what the uh, population of youth uh, would look like. And the thing that really hit me was they called all the numbers to stand up. And um, I was like, oh yeah, okay, so we all sit and that's kind of where they're going with this. And instead, they had talked about how 100% of um, the youth population have experienced school shootings. And I hadn't thought about that. And that really hit me. Um, a different way um, to know and internalize that uh, me as uh, someone who's 35 uh, now has a very different experience uh, from someone who's half my age and uh, basically the underlying message is this isn't how it was supposed to be and it's not how it's supposed to be. God never intended this for us. Um, so yeah, so that was uh, the mass event. They had passed out numbers to all the people and they called numbers and so it was really, they did a very good job of making it a, it's very easy to talk statistics and just have it be statistics and have it roll off your back. Um, but when they have people stand to represent the number of people that are dealing with hunger or the number of people who are dealing with depression and anxiety. Um, yeah, so I was not at all expecting the school shootings. Um, but uh, I mean, when you, when you think about it, when I went to high school, we never did school shooting drills um, or anything like that. Um, and that's something that's just a part of the life of kids now. Um, and I loved that the gathering very, very poignantly pointed out that this was not what God intended for us. Because for them, it's normal. It's normal to do school shooting drills. That's normal. And that's not okay. Because that's not the way that God had ever intended us to live. I know I 
keep saying this, but I saw Jesus when everybody was singing at the top of their lungs, worshiping. And then you get just this beautiful gospel of just the kids just loving this time together in worship. Okay, who gets it now? Who gets what the message is? I'm curious. Anybody? What's the difference between pancakes and waffles? I heard it, I heard it. Yeah, Uh uh-huh. So waffles have holes, right? Pancakes don't, right? So God doesn't, uh, doesn't just want to reign or sometimes reign over parts of your life, right? He wants to, like a pancake, the whole thing. Um, and so I just decided I'm gonna like put that away and I'm gonna use that later because I love that analogy. And I got to pet a horse. I was very excited. <laughs> So they had mounted police outside of the gathering. um, And so they were there, so we got to pet them. Um, Probably probably learning about, like, how Jesus includes everyone in the Bible, like, even with different genders and uh, sexualities. So this next video, if you're going to understand it and laugh along, you have to understand what's going on, okay? So I gave out a scavenger hunt every day, and they were supposed to do a a different scavenger hunt every day, and then we had a scavenger hunt that went on all week long that was for all the states and international. And there was $25 on the line, so competition was fierce, okay? And I do mean fierce. Um, and so basically the way it ended up was that I actually got the most states. I was, um, what? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Don't hate the game. Um, so yeah, um, those were the only ones I'm missing. Now, Ashley got the most international. She got uh, five international. Uh, Canada, China, Peru, South Korea, and Hungary. Um, so if you don't know, while we call it the National Youth Gathering, it's really international um, because there are several countries that come from overseas um, to be at this gathering, um, which is really, really cool. And I couldn't find Marilyn. He couldn't find Marilyn, y'all, and it just bothered him (laughs) to no end. And I'm fairly sure Ethan Schnorr has never actually rolled his eyes in his life, but this one he did. <laughs> hey, I learned that when we are uh, talking with people from the LGBTQ plus community, um, you know, we focus a lot on God's law and what it says in the Old Testament, but we also have to pair that with the gospel and that God loves all of us. And we are all children of God in our baptism. Um, so one of the um, different things that they did this year was they usually do sectionals that is like a different one every day, or they might offer it one or two times throughout the week. This time there was a set number of sessions that the kids could go to. They just rotated the times every single day, um, which was very interesting. And um, uh, one of the... I would say themes that I uh, picked up from the gathering was that they are um, trying to uh, put uh, tools or knowledge in the hands of youth as far as, um, so how do you, how do you live in this uh, culture and this life and have a Christian response for um, things? So um, this was one of the topics that they had talked about this week. Um, I uh, saw Jesus uh, with a wonderful explanation that, uh, or analogy that was given during mass event 
of kintsugi, uh, which is a Japanese um, way of treating broken uh, jars or pottery, um, and basically it involves using uh, the tree sap um, and uh, gold uh, flakes, and it draws attention to the uh, brokenness in the pottery. So um, the idea being that uh, just like uh, the potter, uh, God um, has made us, he um, can remake us um, in all of our uh, brokenness and use our brokenness. Uh, so I just really liked uh, that analogy in the picture. Um, and now the communion set for this wear makes so much more sense um, for the gathering. So we'll show you a picture of that. And there it is. Um, so that's the communion set for this year. And so um, as you can see, uh, the uh, golden stripes through it. So that's how they would, uh, in ancient Japanese culture, uh, actually treat their broken pottery. So. There you go. All right, so all the wristbands. We have some wristbands up here. Drew, do you, you still have them on your wrist? Yep. So we had wristbands for getting food. We had wristbands for entering. We had wristbands for events that we did. Um, and we got wristbands from handouts from other churches. I mean, and believe it or not, we're actually missing a wristband in here. So we had a few. So the gathering always ends with a worship service and communion, um, and so they're able to commune 20,000 people in about 20 to 30 minutes. 20 to 30 minutes, okay? That's intense. So I can walk, walk us through how it works. Okay, so in every, you have all your sections in the stadium and then they will have um, a pastoral crew um, pretty much at every single section. And it is like a drive through where you, you're walking through, you never really stop walking, you just keep on like shuffling. And they do the whole bit and then you just come right back around. Um, so, and they have them interspersed so where there's no traffic jams. So like there is a, it is a smooth machine that is working across the whole stadium. Um, but I don't even know how many teams that they had a lot. I mean, I'm thinking maybe a hundred or more. So, but you have to do that to get through that many people. Um, so then we took a trip to the downtown aquarium after the gathering was done. Um, and then everyone was tired. <laughs> when I tell you we all passed out, we all passed out. Um, so <laughs> Neil and Ashley took a nap at the aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then we got to the hotel and the kids and I passed out. Um, and personally, I just love Ethan because, I mean, he just looks dead. Like, if you didn't know any better, you would have thought he had died. Um, and then we're at the uh, airport as well, sleeping or attempting to. Um, and I'll tell you why we're all so tired. One, it's been a long week, um, but the day got longer than we expected. I for the day was the closing service. Everything about it was great, and I especially liked uh, Reverend Harrison's uh, message and, and uh, talking about doubting Thomas and how, you know, after, once he saw Jesus, he wasn't a doubter anymore and gave his life. He was martyred for his faith, but, but uh, you know, a great example for all of us. Our plate's getting delayed. Our flight's getting delayed, she says. We were supposed to take off at 9.55. We didn't take off until 2.30 in the morning. So they got to have the other experience of a bad flight and a delayed flight. See, we wanted to give them just the full experience. Really, this is what that was all about. I learned that when you use the Southwest app, 
Even if you refresh it and it tells you something, you should click on the details button to learn more. <laughs> So, honestly, I have never had more of a heart attack in my life except for a few other select times. But we were resting very peacefully at the hotel and Ashley was in charge of our transportation. And all of a sudden she gets a notification on her phone because our flight kept getting moved back, moved back, moved back, moved back. And all of a sudden she says, the notification has come on. Our flight is now leaving like 30 minutes ahead of its original start time. So 10.30. And we are currently, I think, an hour and a half from that departure time. And we flew like a bat out of Hades <laughs> out of that hotel. And I am very surprised that we all actually managed to grab our stuff and we got all the children into the cars because I thought we were going to lose one or the other things trying to rush out of the hotel. We spurred our Ubers onto the hotel or to the, to the airport trying to get there. And we <laughs> ran through and false alarm because it was delayed for another six hours. So, <laughs> we love Ashley still, even though we had that experience. <laughs> I feel like I need to clarify this, all right. So my app was showing, my, like my app was showing, it's back to normal schedule. And then I clicked on the details and it said it was uh, delayed till 12.30. And I was like, well, why would the app tell me two different things? So of course I called Southwest. And I explained the situation and the lady on the other line, she, on the other end of the phone, she goes, yeah. This happens. <laughs> Thank you. So I feel, I feel like it wasn't totally my fault, but we ended up getting it fixed and we laughed through the whole situation. So it ended up being great. But <laughs> I see Jesus today. I saw Jesus right here. Because all these lovely people have been awesome through this whole experience. It's been wonderful. We've loved having them. And it may not look it right now, but they're really in a good mood. <laughs> Everybody's been a pleasure. And uh, the kids have all been wonderful, top notch. Would totally do it again. So, yeah. They, the youth, the adults, they all did great. There were plenty of times um, that we stood out in the heat what, at one day. I mean, the half of our kids and adults stood out in the Houston heat for an hour and a half waiting for food um, and never complained about it. Uh, when we were stuck uh, waiting for our shuttle for an hour, not a peep. I mean... And, and even being delayed in the airport for six hours, still not a peep. So, I mean, really top notch, could not have asked for a better crew for this. <laughs> so we all might be smiling in the picture, <laughs> but really, <laughs> Christian's face just makes it, because, <laughs> <laughs> He's doing what everyone else is thinking right now and just crying. <laughs> and honestly, Christian, I didn't even see it until like we zoomed in on the picture later. And as, as, as uh, we're getting driven home uh, by uh, Cynthia Mincher, I see it and I literally start crying in the back seat because I just, I'm laughing so hard I can't stop. <laughs> because of Christian's face. It's a very real interpretation of all of our feelings right then. <laughs> all right. Um, so a um, final note on the gathering before I uh, turn it over to the kids. Um, so um, a little known fact about the gathering and uh, the uh, youth ministry uh, team that they have at the synodical level um, all of the funds for the staffing, for the gathering, for the different programs that the Senate runs for youth events like youth lead, campus ministry, all those sorts of things are not funded by the Senate. 
All those funds come from the National Youth Gathering and other donors. So in other words, what you're seeing is the gathering funding synodical youth ministry for the next three years. That's one of the things that the gathering represents. So if you didn't know that, you know it now. All right, and they announced where we're going in 2025 and we're going to New Orleans. So, woo! All right, so who wants to go first? What? Yes, so go ahead and stand up. <laughs> All right, so you can um, tell them what was the best part about the gathering. Uh, the best part was probably the mass events every night. Okay. And is there any one thing in particular on the table you want to show them? Um, the bucket hats. Drew's bucket hat, he got it signed. I think that's pretty cool. So that's this one. So this is from Concordia, Chicago, and you went around and you got people to sign it. So. Oh, yeah. Everybody wanted a bucket hat. Like, they were, like, high, like, high demand. Out. They sold five. I think they gave out 5,000 in, in a one day. Hours. Yeah. Yep. 5,000 in one day, and they did it for two days. I don't know how we managed 10, to get all of our bucket yeah. hats, but I it's think. a miracle. It's all Ashley. All Ashley. Congrats to reason. Ashley. <laughs> Go, Ashley. All right. Awesome. Go ahead and pass the mic off. All right, Christian, stand up. All right, one thing from the gathering. I really liked uh, the sessions because you got to know a lot more about Jesus and like how stuff is interpreted in the Bible. Okay, and any one thing on here you want everybody to hear about, learn about? I'm good out of your way. See what? The pens. The pen pins. Yeah. Oh, here we go. So there, these are some of the pins. So yeah, lots of people gave away pins and you pinned them on your backpack and on your t-shirt, something to spice things up. All right, over to Drew. All right, what is one thing that you want to tell them about the gathering? Um, there were like these little tiny babies that they had. Right here. And apparently they were really popular, though. They, like, they sold out of all of them. They had. Yep. <laughs> yeah. They were uh, from Life Choice Ministries, so they were there. And this is, do you remember how old? 12 weeks. Yep, 12 weeks. This is the size of a 12-week-old baby with all the fingers and toes. All right. And we got a lot of bracelets and stuff from the gathering. Some were from events that we went to. Awesome, very good. All right, one of the adults. <laughs> well, you know. uh, the one thing from the, uh, the gathering for me, you know, I went as a youth and I had a very uh, different experience as a youth. It was a good experience, but I think um, here we were very intentional about the sessions that we went to, going to the mass events, being engaged um, with other people at the gathering in terms of scavenger hunts, and I think that that was um, really the kicker for me because I didn't get that when I was a youth. We went to our sessions, we went to Mass and we went home. So the work that Charity put in to keep us engaged and involved throughout the entire week, um, I felt like I was a youth again and it was like, it was super fun and the competition was fierce. Um, if you want to see what our scavenger hunts are, I brought all of them. Um, you know, just go ahead and, and take a gander at the state one because I also have a lot of states. Um, but you can read through, I'm, I, I'm still a little bitter. Well, so she didn't tell you this. I'm gonna go ahead and tell the story. <laughs> okay, you tell the story. All right, so on Tuesday, we had two back-to-back -back sessions um, that we were kind of rotating out, you know, being with, with the youth. And um, we found out that one of the sessions that the boys wanted to go to was full, so we had to go find another one. So I'm running through the convention center to try to meet up with them. So three we, city blocks. So, She's yes, running three yes, city blocks. So that we could get them to another session. And I had already dropped off Christian and Jaden in another session. And unbeknownst to me, I left my state scavenger hunt folded on the chair. 
And I did not know that because I was so concerned about making sure that I get to uh, Drew and She's being Ethan. a good adult leader. That's what she was doing. So at the end of that session with Drew and Ethan, I'm looking for it because there were some people in that session that I wanted to go get a signature from. And I almost broke down in tears. I was so upset because I could not find it. I thought I had lost it. I thought it had fallen out. I was incessantly texting Charity like, I'm so devastated. I could just cry. Like, I was so upset. And she let me stew in it for like 10, 15 minutes. And then she sends me a picture back that says, you love me, right? And she had my scavenger hunt. And my immediate thought was, why do you have that? And then I was like, oh, I probably left it in that other session. So it was like, it was a real touch and go 15 minutes there, but here we are. <laughs> I was not anticipating that response from her, just to clarify. Um, and also another story that we had from the gathering. So we. <laughs> <laughs> One of the districts, which was the New England district, which is obviously New England area, had their district event during the gathering. So that meant that they all got out at the same time towards the stadium to walk in, and Ashley and I literally stopped them at the door because they all had on the same t-shirt to find all these tiny little states with Lutherans in them to get their signatures. There was a lot of people from Connecticut, and we were very disappointed because we couldn't find Maine or Vermont. So, <laughs> all right, Neil, your turn. Well, there's so many things uh, that, that uh, were so wonderful about the whole week, but uh, again, everybody has pointed out the mass events, and each one of them was different. But, but the one that really probably touched me more than any was the, one of the MCs was uh, Noemi Guerra, and uh, I think Guerra means warrior, right? Mm -hmm. um, so she gave an awesome testimony, an awesome message talk. Uh, and she literally, uh, a couple nights before this talk, she'd had a panic attack. And so, you know, I know I can only imagine trying to address a crowd of 20,000 people, what she must have been going through and all the preparation for that. But, you know, it was a really powerful witness that she gave. and. Uh, we heard about this, uh, you know, in how uh, Jesus values every life. We heard about it in the Bible studies, and uh, we heard it in her message, and we heard it in another uh, message where they were talking about the orange cone man outside. How valuable the orange cone man is getting all the people, you know, through the traffic and, and marking where there's, uh, you know, work going on and, and uh, boundaries that have to be kept. So. That was the kind of message that all of us took out of that, and, and uh, we need to always remember that every, every person is valued and help them any way we can. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. So um, it is uh, time for uh, Sunday school, or our, our hour together is done. Um, but thank you, guys, for listening. And the one other thing that I'll point out, I know I already told you about the postcards, but... Um, this uh, was our flag for the week. So when you're walking around with, you know, 20,000 other people, you kind of need to be able to keep track of your group. So I went and bought a, a professional tour guide stick and a flag. So I walked around like this, and it was called the bat signal. <laughs> <laughs> and so our message to the group text was signals up or send up the signal, something along those lines. But um, the fun thing about this is that we had everybody, uh, including Isaac, sign the back of it. And I've got a picture that we're going to print. It'll be an 8 by 10 and we'll attach it to the flag. And then we'll hang uh, this in the youth room um, as our display for uh, attending the gathering. Um, so if you're ever downstairs at some point, stop on by and you can see uh, the flag flying. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask um, our youth to uh, roll the tables out into the Welcome Center um, for anybody who wants to walk around. So go ahead and get out and do that now before I release them, and then you have to fight the crowds. That's all right. I'm, I won't die. All right, Drew, go ahead and start with the first one. Yep, perfect.
Go ahead. Can you get, make sure they get all set up? Okay. Perfect. Um, my, what good students you are. Just kind of sat there and wait until I said you could go. Wonderful. Look at you. Hang on. I didn't say you could go yet. <laughs> no, let's pray. Um, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for... Uh,